time and I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I think I've met several of you before. Uh, my name is Sarah Stewart and I am the ed tech specialist for striving readers and I work alongside um, the wonderful ladies in the 21st century division. So Tara is here as a co-presenter. And um, what our goal was for this webinar was to kind of give you guys some ideas on how you can take Edmodo to the next level. Uh, most teachers that have started using it feel very comfortable with some of the main features and using it for basic conversations um, and a somewhat of a learning management system, meaning that your kids are able to turn in work and you're able to grade the work and give feedback. Um, but there are constantly new features that are coming on board with um, Edmodo, and I wanted to make sure that we start to share these features with everybody. And we also wanted to kind of introduce you to maybe some new ideas of some third-party products that can be really easily integrated in. So um, the first thing that I wanted to do is, if you guys are using edmodo.com, I wanted to encourage you to um, sign up on the Washoe County School District domain. Um, as this starts to grow, that's going to give us a little bit more power as far as our communication is concerned. And um, it will actually treat us as one giant group if we're all in the same domain. So we are able to communicate just by um, clicking, you know, basically the Washoe County School District could be considered one large group. So um, if you have not done that yet, make sure you contact Tara or myself. And the only difference is that you'll log in at wcsd.edmodo.com instead of edmodo.com, but everything else remains exactly the same. Um, you will see all your groups, all your content, everything is exactly the same. It's just that you're, you're now associated with our domain. Um, really quick, I want to get a little bit of information from you guys. We are going to do a quick poll. I want to um, find out what your experience level is. And so you should see a poll pop up on your screen. If you guys will go ahead and take a few seconds. And we'll let everybody, um, almost everybody's voted, I can see. Okay, so I'm going to close it. We've got 100% of people. And so we've got, um, we've got a nice mix here, which is great. Um, I really want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable being here, whether you're brand new, um, whether you've been using it a while, or whether you're expert level. If you're brand new, um, you may want to go back and watch the beginner level recorded webinar that's available on the Edmodo website. And um, just to kind of reinforce some of the basics that I won't be going over. And if, but it's still worthwhile for you to be here because hopefully you'll pick up a lot of big ideas that you can use moving forward. And um, those of you who have been using it for a while but are looking for new ideas or expert level are looking for more ideas, then hopefully we have um, some great features to share with you as well. So thanks for, um, for completing that. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to show you guys is um, that there's a lot of different third-party products out there that you can embed into Edmodo that kind of kick it up a notch and really can help you capture the imagination and um, attention of your students. So I've created a group called Demo, and um, at the end of this, I'll send out a, a follow-up email to everybody that has all the different links of everything that we talked about. And um, I'll also send out the, the group code to this demo group if you want to jump in and try some things. Um, the first one that I want to show you guys is Vokey.com, okay? And um, it, these are all free tools, the ones that I'm going to go through and show you. But Vokey.com is a free site where you can sign up and you can create these talking avatars. And so this is a great way that you can post, um, you know, audio recordings for your students, whether it be an assignment or whether it be a welcome, um, really it's, it's up to you. But um, when you go to Vokey.com and sign up for an account, you've got these tabs at the, at the top. And I'm not going to really go into the details of how to make it. It's, I think it's best for you to just get in and play with it. But you click on create and it allows you to kind of you know, make it fun and create the look the way you want it. And there's a lot of them that are free. And then you have to pay if you want some of the more jazzy ones, but I've never paid. And when you're done, um, you have this publish your Vokey option. And when you click on that, you can select the size. 
And so I'm just going to select small. And what it does is it creates an embed code. Now, as you're interacting with different sites out on the web, I think that you um, you may already know this or you may um, not, but there are lots of different third-party sites out there that offer embed codes. Most of these are going to work just great in Edmodo. So anytime you see an embed code, um, it's probably worth your while to copy that and paste it in Edmodo and see if this is something that you can use in Edmodo. Um, the benefit of that is that now everything, all your information is in one location and your students don't have to leave the site to get all that information. So you can see that I'm going to copy this information and I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how to embed this Boki into Edmodo. So you'll, you know, type your message just like you normally would and then you will click on file and in that top link, you can either put a URL, like a direct web link, or you can, you can paste these embed codes that you're probably starting to see places. And um, you can also see lots of embed codes on some popular sites like YouTube. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that you guys pay close attention to other sites like Vokey because they also have them. So this is going to be our introduction. And I'm going to send it to the demo group. And when I hit send, it's going to appear. And you can see when I click on it, it's going to take just a second to load. But, and it's small. I could have made it a lot larger, which I probably should have because the small is really small. Um, Hi, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our PDE class 31. So you can see, um, I'm not sure if you guys were able to hear that audio or not, but it was actually me talking. And Vokey's really nice. If you don't like these, if you don't like having your own um, voice on there, you can type it out and have an avatar voice on there. But, you know, imagine the ways that you can use this as, you know, introducing a new project, introducing a writing prompt, just something that kind of jazzes it up just a little bit and gets your kids excited. And, and it's all embedded right there in, in Edmodo. So that's Vokey, and that's really simple and easy to use. The next one that I wanted to show you guys was Wallwisher, and um, Wallwisher is also extremely easy to set up. I'm actually already signed in, um, but what this does is allow you to create little um, boards, um, conversation boards, basically, and um, once you create a board, um, it gives you that embed code that I was talking about again. So you guys can see my embed code over here to the side. So I'm going to copy that. And so I just do control copy. I'm going to go back over to my Edmodo group. And again, I'm not spending a lot of time on how to use these tools, like Vokey and how to use Wallwisher, because it's really very intuitive and step-by-step. -step. Once you log in and get an account, you, you will have no problem. Um, and if you did want a little bit of guidance, Tara and I'd be happy to help you guys with that. So um, this could be something like homework problems. Um, Misha in our department has used this a lot with math, um, putting in different questions in math. And I think once we embed this, you'll get a better idea of what a wall wisher looks like. So I'm going to paste that embed code. I'm going to send it to that demo group again. And, okay, so now this one pops up. So when I click on play, there's that wall that has posted up, and it lives in Edmodo. Now, Wall Wisher um, is really great. So if I'm a student right now, or if you guys were inside of this demo group right now, you could basically double-click anywhere on that wall, and you could type your name. And you could answer the question that I had posted. Um, and this could be, like I said, a math problem. This could be, you know, a critical thinking prompt, whatever you can think of. And basically, um, all you have to do is double click and it appears on that board. And that would be a great homework assignment. And then the next day your kids come in, you could display this on the board and you guys could, you know, look at each of the answers and, and analyze them from there. You do want to make sure you teach your kids some digital citizenship um, 
things such as not putting their full name on there, anything online, you always want to just stick with first names only. You may want to do something like Sarah period one or something like that if you have several class periods. But um, uh, another thing that's worthwhile to state is that Wallwisher also has the ability for you to moderate the post. So if it makes you a little nervous, the thought of kids just going on there and clicking and adding little post-it notes onto this wall, you can set it up so that you can moderate them before they're visible. And so that's another really great way that you can um, utilize it. And it's awesome that it embeds right inside of the um, Edmodo environment. And um, so that's wallwisher.com. And again, I am going to send you guys out a link with all of these. The next um, third-party site that can really help um, jazz up your Edmodo is called Blabberize. And kids love these. Um, once you log in, um, it's just a matter of uploading an image. And then you kind of paste a little mouth where you want it to talk. And then you um, either record. Um, I think this one, you have to record the voice. And so this is one that I made a long time ago. My son's like one years old here in this one, and, and he's like five or six now. So anyway, um, it was um, a blabber of him saying ABCs. And so um, when you're done, this also gives you the option of getting grabbing that embed code. And so I'm going to highlight that embed code, copy it, go back into Edmodo, and... Imagine this could be you. This could be a historical character. Uh, this could be a scientist if you're a science teacher. This could be your kids could be creating these and posting these. I keep I keep mentioning all these ideas from the perspective of the teacher, but you know the really the cool thing is that your students could be um, using these as um, homework assignments or project ideas. So I'm going to send this one, and when I click play, it's embedded right in there. E -F -C -A. One more time after that. Right. Okay, so imagine um, this with a historical figure, scientist, you, one of your students. It really kind of just injects that motivation and um, excitement for what might, you know, what might normally be maybe a boring task for your students. But I think, you know, um, using and integrating a tool like Blabberize really makes it fun and a little bit more exciting for the students. So um, before we go into some more tools, um, I want to make sure that there aren't any questions. So um, Tara, have you, have you came across, come across any questions that we need to address with the group? Uh, no, like I said, I can't, I can't see, um, any people or what, if anybody's put anything in the chat. Okay. Well, I'll take a quick break and look in the chat. Um, and then we're going to have to fix that for next time so that. Tara has that control. Anything that you want to add, Tara, at this point? No, actually, I, um, I'm excited about this as well because I haven't really embedded things like Vokey um, in Edmodo. I've, I think I, know, I knew you could do it, but I just, I've never used it in that way, so that's kind of cool. All right, awesome. It just, you know, it just adds a little bit. It's not anything that... Um, adds you different, you know, communication that you couldn't do. You could still communicate in Edmodo in words, but it just adds that extra notch. Um, while we're kind of talking about some audio things, I wanted to talk about one more tool that is a free open source tool called Audacity. And um, I'll send you the link so if you're interested in downloading it, but it's fairly easy to download and it, um, it's a free audio recording tool. And this can be used very easily with Edmodo as well. And it has a lot of different possibilities, um, not just for the teacher. Um, the teacher can record, um, you know, audio prompts and things that they want to share with their students. 
but um, imagine being able to give verbal feedback to your students. We all know it's a lot easier to talk and, you know, talk to somebody than it is to type out or write out feedback. So using this as a feedback tool as well, and then maybe training your students how to use it as well. So I've already downloaded it, and it's here on the bottom. So I'm going to open the program up, and I may have to, um, let's see. It's going to be open here. Let's see. Audacity. Okay, so I'm going to do a new Audacity. This is what it looks like when you open Audacity up. I'm going to click on record. And so let's pretend that I'm actually giving verbal feedback to a student for an assignment that they did. I'm looking over their paper or their project, and instead of typing the feedback, I'm actually saying it. So when I hit stop, um, I'm going to export it. Now, you do have to do a double download. Uh, you have to download Audacity, but you also have to download an MP3 plugin in order to make it an MP3 file, which I would recommend that you do. And so I'm going to save this as, let's just say this was John Feedback, okay? So I'm going to save it on my desktop, and it's going to save as a an MP3. And I, you know, you could use those tracking things, but I'm not going to add anything in there at this point. So I'm going to bring um, this back up. And um, remember, there's lots of places that you could post this. You could post it as feedback within the gradebook. Um, or you could, if it were like a prompt or a general announcement to the group, you could post it here in the main stream. So I'm going to tell my students to listen to this. Um, obviously, you know, it's not really ma matching with my example that this was private feedback for John, but imagine that this was a prompt for the whole student or the whole class. This time I'm going to click on file and I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to click on that John feedback MP3 file and I'm going to send it to the group or send it to John because remember as a teacher you could send feedback to individuals. So you could send it in the stream to just one student if you wanted. And then when they log into Edmodo, they see your, your little message that says listen to this and they could click and play. let's pretend that I'm actually giving verbal feedback to a student for an assignment that they did. I'm looking over their paper or their project and just said, And you can see just by clicking play, they've got that feedback. And um, for me, writing feedback was just the hardest thing for me as a teacher because it, it was so crucial for kids to get that feedback, but it takes a lot of time. So using Audacity and, and kind of flipping it a little bit and giving them verbal feedback makes, um, makes it really nice for everybody. And Sarah, this is Tara. Um, okay. I was going to say that Audacity is available um, if you go through uh, on the start menu in Windows. It's on the... Um, application catalog that teachers can download it um, at all of the schools. So that's if nobody's used Audacity before, realize that you have it ready to download um, in the applications catalog. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing that because I didn't, I did not know that. That's good to know. So let's say. Um, the next thing that I want to show you guys is a couple other third-party things, and then we'll jump into a couple things in Edmodo. Um, the next one is Quizlet, and if you haven't seen Quizlet, it's just awesome. Um, I just found out they had a Quizlet app, and so I'm excited to try that out. But Quizlet is a really nice site where you can create um, flashcards and games. And you can create them from scratch, or you could browse through um, the thousands of different resources that other teachers have made as well. But what I love about this is, again, that it offers those embed codes or those link codes. And so this is not one that I made. This is one that I found just by browsing through the libraries that um, were available. And you can see that these are um, periodic table of elements flashcards, and the students basically um, interact and use it as a self-directed study tool. So you can check whether you want to see both sides um, or not. You can mix them up and shuffle them. You can enable audio. Um, this is great for ELL as well. 
Um, but you can also turn these into games as well. You can see that this one has also been um, created so that it could be used as a scatter game or a space race game. And so when I click over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on this link to embed. And uh, I could place the link if I wanted. Um, and it gives me a short URL and a long one, but um, I'm all over these embed codes because it makes it visually right there in Edmodo. And so here it gives me lots of different options for embed codes. I can use the regular flashcard mode or I could use the learn mode, which I'm not 100% sure what that is. Um, and it might just be more, um, actually, I don't know. I need to explore and see what the learn mode is before I start telling you guys what I think it is. Um, and then the scatter and the speller. So um, if I copy, let's just do the, the flashcard one. And I go back over to my Edmodo. Um, I could, you know, assign this to my class. So I'm going to click on that link and then paste that bed code. And attach it and send it to my group. In this case, to the demo group. And um, when they click on that play button, it's embedded right there directly in Edmodo. And so they can still shuffle it. They could still enable the audio. Um, but this helps them basically interact and study with these cards. And, and this is a great tool because you don't have to create them from scratch. There's a lot of really good things that have already been created on there. Um, okay, so that one is Quizlet. Really, really like Quizlet. The next tool that I wanted to share with you guys is a screencasting tool. It's called screener.com. And I've used a lot of screencasting tools, and this one is my favorite because it's so easy. You don't have to download any software. It's all web-based, and it is super easy. You literally just hit record, and it lets you choose the area of your screen that you want to record. So when I say screencast, I'm basically saying that um, you can share and record anything that's on your computer screen. So this is really good if you are kind of dabbling with the flipping your classroom um, or you don't want to repeat project um, or a, a tutorial example. Um, many times you could record it and then it's always available for the kids to either um, view from home or you know, actually 24 seven. So um, when you do record, um, I'm not actually gonna go into that right now, I don't think because um, I already have several already recorded, but once you've recorded it, it will give you off to the side where it says share this screencast. You can see it gives you an embed code. It also gives you the link if you prefer that. So, um, and you can also modify the, the pixel size. You can mess around with that. So again, let's see what this looks like when we, um, I can actually embed a screencast. So this is a really great way um, to demonstrate, do tutorials. Um, if you're trying to show your students how to find something or do research on the web, this is something that you could record yourself doing and then share it. And like I said, I, there's lots of other screencasting tools out there. I also like Jing, um, and Jing works really well with Edmodo as well. But after I found Screener, um, I'm kind of leaning towards that one. Okay, so we're going to click on this one, and you can see it actually kind of pops it up in its own little window, but it still is in Edmodo. Okay, so that's kind of a boring screencast because it was just of the program screener, um, but you kind of get the point. Uh, obviously, you you would do a screencast of something with a little bit more substance than what I just showed you. So those are some um, third-party tools. Um, now we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit, and um, we're going to kind of go back into Edmodo a little bit and look at some maybe some features that um, you might not have known about or maybe um, think of them in just a little bit of a different way. And then I'd like to 
have block off the last 10, 15 minutes for questions. So um, you're more than welcome to ask questions um, as we go along as well. Okay, so give me just one moment and um, we'll, we'll kind of switch gears. Okay, sorry you guys, I had to give my daughter a snack so she, she would be good. <laughs> okay, so um, in Edmodo, um, I'm actually um, going to log out for a moment and log in as a student. Okay, I um, if you haven't done this, I recommend that you guys create like a, a phantom kind of ghost student. Um, it helps when you're you're wanting to see what things look like from the student point of view. Um, it makes it nice to be able to to log in as that. Well, if I look kind of scroll down, um, hopefully I'm going to see an assignment here that thought that I created. Let's see here. Okay, so um, here's the assignment, and I'm going to actually turn it in. Um, and I want, as I turn it in, I wanted to show you guys that there's this new thing in Edmodo called reactions. So as a student, when you go and turn in um, assignments, you can actually have a reaction to it. So you can see down here, um, it says awesome, liked it, interesting, tough, challenging not taught in class, need more time. So for wh whatever it's worth, those are options that um, the students have with reactions. The students can type, um, type in questions or feedback to you um, in the comment box. But notice they have the option to attach files and links as well. So if the kids created their own screencast, or they created anything that I just showed you, like a, a Quizlet, or if the kids created a Blabberize or a Vokey, or if the kids made a, um, maybe you assigned them to do um, a, a verbal recording. In that case, they could click on file and, and they could browse and find that Audacity file that they created and they could upload um, their verbal um, answers to you. This is a great way to, to kind of hit some of those new standards with speaking and listening. Um, but for this example, I'm going to attach a Word document because it ties in with what I would like to demonstrate next. And um, so I'm going to turn in that assignment. But again, remember that everything I just showed you, don't forget it, that it's things, tools that students can use as well. And they can, um, they can produce these kind of things just as easy as the teacher. Okay, so I'm going to log out, and I'm going to log back in as me, the teacher. Okay. And I'm going to pull up that um, demo student's assignment. So I'm going to go up here to progress. I'm going to go down to demo. And um, I can see that it's turned in. So I'm going to say view work. And this is kind of a somewhat new feature. Uh, it's been around for like six months or so, I think. But when students upload documents, underneath where they've turned it in, you might have noticed there's a little, it looks like a little highlighter icon, but that's actually called an annotation button. And this is just really incredible. It's one of my favorite tools. When you click on that annotation button, and you can see this was my ideas of things when I was brainstorming of things I wanted to share with you guys, um, it opens it up, and as the teacher, imagine that if this was a, um, a an assignment that a student turned in, you now can annotate um, over that assignment. Um, and my handwriting is kind of yucky because I'm using a, a touchpad. But with a regular mouse or if you have a little slate, um, there's 
if you were going to use this a lot, I would suggest a bamboo slate. They're little USB slates that plug into your computer and they're like a hundred bucks, but they're made by bamboo and they work great. But you can highlight, you can type text, you could strike things out, and you can also add comment bubbles. So it could be, um, you know, you might want to give a certain point and a comment on there. And what's great is this auto saves. So when your students go back and they see that you've graded their assignment, they will actually see all of those annotations that you have left for them. So um, it's just an incredible way to give feedback to your students. And um, we know that formative assessment is one of the most powerful ways that you can um, work with students as far as achievement. Giving that constant feedback um, is one of the best things that we can do. And this annotation feature allows us to do that. Um, you know, imagine, I mean, there's just, maybe at the end we can all share different ideas of, of how this could be used because there's so many different ways. But um, if I click on that download button, I can download the annotated PDF if I want, or I could keep it in a Word document. So um, when that student actually logs back in, they will, you know, not only be able to see their grade that I've given them, but they will actually be able to pull up that annotated document and see all that feedback. So that's a really great tool. If you haven't explored that one, I would definitely say make sure you explore it. Um, the next thing that I want to go through and show you is um, the badges. Um, badges are just incredible tools that um, there's just a lot of research around motivation and, you know, um, when you turn things into like a competition and you're able to earn rewards, it's amazing what a motivator that is for students. And even adults love getting um, badges in other instances. They haven't allowed adults to get badges yet um, to be awarded from teacher to teacher, but Edmodo can um, award you badges. So uh, the more active that you are, you'll see that you have some badges. If you go to your profile, you'll see under teacher badges what badges that you have shared. But as you connect with more and more people, um, you can also look under the shared student badges and you can, you can actually take badges that other people have created and use them yourself. So you can create your own badges, but you can also um, sh you know, use others that teachers have, have created. So I'm gonna give props to a friend of mine, Devin Heinz, who's a teacher in Las Vegas. And he has like the most unbelievable collection of student badges. So if I go under his shared student badges, he has 147 shared badges. And he has like the greatest stories. When I ask him like, how he, you know, how, what kind of reactions he gets from these, his kids yeah. get so yeah. into these oh, badges. Yeah. He's got the yeah. evil genius yeah. badge, as you yeah. can see, with yeah. Dr. Yeah. Evil. Yeah. He's sure. got the, you know, you rock, and it's got a little guitar in there. One of my favorites is his bladder badge. If a kid doesn't use a bathroom pass for, you know, that quarter, he, they get the bladder badge. So we all know that that's um, always a challenge with kids, especially middle school, which is what he teaches. Um, the on the ball badge, great idea badge, 100%. Um, He's also got a really cool badge. I'm not seeing it on here, but I know he has one called the beast badge, and he awards that um, to the student who scores the highest on each test. And he says his kids get so competitive about wanting to win um, that beast badge. So what's awesome about this is because he's made these shareable, um, let's say that I'm like, you know what, I love his, um, his great thinking badge right here. When I click on it, I can actually say, add that to my student badges. And now, hey, I have a new badge now that I can um, award my own students. So not only can I create my own, but Edmodo is all about uh, capitalizing on those collaborative professional relationships. And that's one of the greatest features of it is the, the power of collaborating with others. And so being able to, to get... Um, ideas and, and resources from other people is 
is they make it very easy to do so. So, Sarah, sorry to interrupt. No, uh, this is Tara. Um, I need to head out, so okay. I just want to let you know. Thanks, Tara. Thank you. You're welcome. Have fun with the rest of the webinar, everybody. Thanks. You're in good hands. <laughs> So um, if I wanted to add that a badge to a group, I click, I go to my grade book and I can click on add badge to group. And um, there is that great thinking badge that I just um, borrowed from Devin. So I can click on that badge and um, he has it described as you showed um, exceptional inquiry skills in class. So I'm going to add that to the group. Now you can assign these to individual students. But you can also assign it to the group, and then when they achieve that badge, you know, if I had a whole class loaded here instead of just that one student, let's say I had a whole 30 or 40 kids there, I could just go down the line, and when they achieve that certain badge, I can just put a check mark in there. So those shared badges are truly um, just a great motivator. Um, to assign it to individual students, you click on your members, and then You'll see all your students listed under that group, and you can click on that individual student, and then you um, can, from that little side box that appears, not only can you change the password and get their parent codes from there, but you can also award a badge. So I could award the badge individually um, instead of, you know, within the group gradebook area. Um, Okay, so the badges um, is a great thing. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you is the Discover and Insights. These are um, the insights we kind of talked about before. That was where, um, you know, you can give reactions to posts where the, or homework where the kids um, can say that, you know, they liked that, it was challenging. That was an insight that I showed you earlier. Um, Discover is really cool because, again, this is a way that it really um, reaches into the collaborative power of Edmodo. And um, it's not just a great tool for, for using it with instruction for your kids, but for building those professional collaborative relationships. And so, for example, um, so for Discover, you can actually go in there and you can type in something that you're teaching. So I'm going to type in photosynthesis. And I was a science teacher, so I tend to use a lot of those types of examples. And when I type that in, I can say check in. And now it says that I have checked into photosynthesis. And then I can click on this update my suggestions. And... It should bring me to all the kinds of resources that match up with what I am teaching and give me the option to link up with other teachers that are teaching that as well. So as I scroll down here, I can see um, anything that's maybe been tagged or related to photosynthesis is going to show up here. And now I've got access to all these resources. Um, related to what I'm teaching because I've checked in. So as I'm going through here, um, if I find um, a resource that I want, I can actually click on the little Add to Library button, and then it appears in my library, or I could create a post about it and send it to my students right from there. So it's just a really great way um, to, to check in and, and get lots of digital resources related to, to what you're teaching. Let's see. I just want to make sure that I'm covering everything that I wanted to with you guys. Um, don't forget, um, this isn't really a new thing, but I don't want you to forget about the power of small groups. Um, if you click on, and, and if my Edmodo looks different from yours, it's because they've upgraded the layout. And so, if you see that option, upgrade to new layout, and you'd go ahead and do that, you'll see that some of your options are in a little bit different spot. But if you click on small groups, um, you can easily make as many small groups as you want. You just click on small groups, and then in the top right-hand corner, you click new small group. And um, 
I just want to stress that these are really great for not just projects that so you could use small groups for putting kids into groups for projects, but also for differentiating instructions. So if you have kids that are strong in some areas and um, weak in others, you can group them into different either homogeneous groups or heterogeneous groups based on whatever your, your focus is. And you can actually assign them resources based on whatever their needs are. So if I go back into my um, main group, if I go into posts, um, and I wanted to assign some resources that were targeted to a special group, whatever their needs are, um, I can go ahead and do that, whether it's in my library or a file. Um, but I can actually type in the name of that small group that I just differentiate. There it is. That one's the demo parent, so it's this one. So it tells me um, that I can that that's the differentiate group, and then it has demo in parentheses because that's the parent group. But don't forget that you can actually send posts and information to small groups, just like you can large groups. And then if the students have been added to that small group, they'll see that um, group appear in at the sub menu under their group. Um, to add students, you would um, click on the small group and then you'll see available members and you basically just click on them and drag them over. So um, just to kind of wrap it up before we go, um, I wanted to encourage you to browse around in the App Store. This is a fairly new feature. If you go um, to the very top toolbar, you'll see one of the icons says Apps. And um, if you click on Apps, you can actually go to the store. Those are all the apps that I've either bought or um, downloaded for free. A lot of them, you can see I've got $2 left in my account. Um, you can purchase credit, um, so that's something that maybe you could have conversations with um, at your school if you guys have um, technology money. That would maybe be a great place to spend it is to buy some of these apps. But basically, they are um, interactive, I guess, applications or plugins that are available to the groups. And some of them are paid, and a lot of them are free. So it kind of looks like the app store, if you're familiar with iTunes, um, where you can sort by paid or free, and it um, outlines it by the top apps of the week or top publishers of the week. Um, and I've been playing in here a little bit. If you scroll down, you can go into apps by category. And, um, you know, there's, there's quite a bit in there, and there is quite a bit of free stuff. And I've been playing with some of them and downloading some. Some of them I've paid for. Some of them I've just downloaded for free. Um, but it's really great. It gives you um, a lot of um, added interactivity and um, really great for self-directed learning when we're trying to get kids um, in that mode, that 21st century skill of self-directed learning, this is a great way that you could do that. When you buy these different apps, they they provide students access to all kinds of different um, hands-on interactive activities. You can see these Learn Zillions have a lot of free ones, and they're um, at all different grade levels. And, and there's a good mix in here of um, elementary and secondary, and they're growing every day. Um, I'm going to, I should have done this when I was logged in as the student before, but I'm going to quickly log in as the student and show you how it would look for a student. When you buy apps, whether they're free or paid, you can um, assign them to a group. And so when I downloaded these, um, I assigned them into the demo group. So I'm logged in as the student right now. And if I click on apps, you can see all the apps that the teacher, which is really me as well, has kind of made available to that group. And um, this, so the student, let's say he clicked on Amazing Science. This was an app that I had to pay for, but um, um, I, I, I really like it, actually. I was messing around with it earlier. And right now I'm like, you know, I don't mind um, paying for these because I can always have my children play around with them. Um, but you can select your subject, and so I taught biology, so that's the one that I was messing around with earlier. But you can choose a, um, a topic, and so I was doing cells and cell processes earlier, so if I were a student, this is kind of like my dashboard. 
And I go in there and I've got basically like this interactive textbook. It's amazing. I've got access to videos. I've got access to um, diagrams and images. Um, I can actually um, quiz myself to see, you know, check my own understanding. And there's the quiz at the bottom. And I can submit my answers. But it's self-paced learning because when I'm done, um, I can just go to the next topic. And it's a great study tool. And then when I go, the next time I log in, I'll go back to my um, dashboard and it'll show me, you know, what topics I've done and which ones I haven't done. So it's a great add-on. And this one was a paid one. But like I said before, there's a lot of free ones in there as well. And so far, um, I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen in there. So I want to encourage you to go check out that app store. So um, 4.15, this was my goal, was to wrap up the new content and, um, and then um, get some questions. So um, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to, um, you know, unmute the mic. Um, if, you, if you'd like to ask the question, a question or if you have a chat, um, a comment. Um, while I'm kind of waiting to see if anything appears in the chat or if anybody would like to say anything, I'm going to choose another um, poll that I'd like you guys to, to take for a second here. What is the likelihood that you will try some of these new ideas? And I think we're still waiting for a couple more people to vote nice on my end because I can see how many people have voted. I, I don't, I can't see who voted what. So, um, so don't worry. I, I just can see as the group as a whole, how many people have voted. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and share the results with you guys. Um, we've got some possibly, so that's good. And we've got lots of um, most likely and lots of absolutely. And so um, if you're kind of treading back and forth or you need more help or whatever, um, feel free to contact me. If you want me to do a follow-up webinar that is slower and maybe a little bit more focused, I don't mind doing that as well. Um, I know that like I tend to throw a lot of stuff out at people and it can be a little overwhelming, but um, I always encourage people Really, if you walk away with one thing, then um, one thing that you can focus on, then that's great. And I think I have um, one more poll that I would like you guys to um, to answer. Um, I tried to give you guys some new ideas, but um, I'm sure you guys have quite a few ideas, hopefully. Um, and maybe if you guys, when I send the follow up, um, you guys can post some of those ideas with our group. Um, I'm going to send out the group code for the demo group. That way, if you guys want to try any of those, um, apps, you'll be able to go in as a student and try some of those apps, but also you guys can post some ideas maybe that you came up with and we can share those with the group in that Edmodo group. So um, please go ahead and join that group. When I send out the follow-up email, I'll put the group code in there, and we can use that as a place to share some. Um, I know I gave you lots of ideas, but I'm looking to you guys to share some application ideas in context of what you teach. So that would be awesome if you guys would do that. So I'm not really seeing any, um, any questions in, in the poll. Um, and I'm not one to, you know, keep you just because I said it would last till 4:30. Um, so I do, you know, I will stick around if you want to, if you want to um, stick around and ask any questions. But um, I do want to say thank you guys so much. I know it's hard to do these things right after school. Oh, we do have some questions. So, um, Julie, go ahead. I'm going to unmute you. And I'm not sure, I can't hear you, Julie, so I'm wondering, I'm going to check the um, questions and see if there's something in there. 
or in the chat because you can always type your question in there if you want. Okay, feel free. I'm going to leave it unmuted, um, and then I'm going to unmute Kathy as well. Kathy, if you have a mic, you can go ahead and jump in. Is that you, Kathy? I hear somebody. And Athena, I'm going to um, unmute you. Go ahead. So feel free, you guys. I have unmuted you if you have your hand up, so you feel free to jump in. You should be able to just, if your mic is active, to jump right in there. Um, or you can also type it in the chat or the question. Okay, so when Misha uses this for math questions, how do students submit math responses? Um, she, that's a question from Athena. Um, she actually, um, I wish I had the example to show you. I can send it out in the email because I did have a screenshot of how she did it. But she would put like a, um, I wasn't a math teacher, so I might be messing up the language, but she put like a formula, like how many ways can you, you know, solve this formula? And then the kids would double click on it and create their own post-it note. And then they would type um, their answer or their formula um, or the, the digits that answered the question. And um, I can put that in the follow-up email if you're interested in a visual for that. And then... Jennifer said, would you be willing to do a PD at a school for a department? Um, go ahead and um, please email me if you're interested in that. I, I officially work for Striving Reader, so it might depend on what school you're at. Um, but I might be able to, um, even if you're not at a Striving Reader school. So you can email me. And um, I'm also going to give you guys the link to this record. This whole webinar is recorded, so you guys will have access to that as well. But yeah, go ahead and um, email me. And then, can I only get badges from teachers I'm connected to? Um, yes, you do have to be connected. Um, but if you guys want, um, the guy that I um, am friends with from Las Vegas, go ahead and um, ask for connection from him. His name is Devin Heinz. Um, and I'll tell him that he might get a couple people to connect with him, but he's awesome and he will completely connect with you guys and then you can borrow all those awesome badges that he has. So um, thanks, Athena, for saying see above questions because at first I didn't see those questions. And then Julie said, are you using a Mac? Yes, I am. Um, I'm going to send out that wall wisher. Okay, so um, I'm hoping that I got all the questions, but you guys can feel free to to email me if there's anything else you think of. And I know this went um, really fast, but um, we have uh, you will have access to the recording. When I send you a follow-up email, um, you will have access to the recording, so you can go back and you know pause or or um, whatever you'd like to do. And I'll put all the links to the different tools and stuff that I talked about as well. Okay, so. Um, thank you all very, very much for your time. And um, if there's anything else, you know, future, you know, webinars, um, feel free to request those as well. And I hope everybody has a really great evening.